That's a no then. <laughs> Great. I can say anything now. Um, I've just got myself this. Um, this is a, it's a rapid violin. It looks, it looks quite a lot like a normal violin, but the good thing about this one is just with a few hours or at most days practice, I'm, I'm going to be making music. Uh, and this is fantastic because I, I don't have time to learn a proper instrument. This should get me where I need to be pretty quickly. So, I mean, first of all, what am I aspiring to? What, what do I actually want to, uh, to be able to play? This is what I'd uh, what I'm aiming for. Okay. Can anybody tell me what this piece of music is? Just shout it out. Excellent, yeah, four seasons. And in this case, it's being played by Nigel Kennedy. So a wonderful piece of music played by a wonderful musician. This is how Nigel plays it. And uh, I'm now gonna do my rendition. This, uh, this could be the moment that I'm discovered on the international stage that my, my career changes forever. So uh, just, uh, if you're all ready, here we go. <laughs> that, that wasn't quite right, so I think there was a, something a little bit wrong with maybe the, the timing of it. I'm just going to give it another go. I mean, technically, that was music, but it didn't quite sound like Nigel Kennedy's version of the Four Seasons. I don't really understand this, because I know how to play a violin. I, I understand that I hold down my fingers on the strings, changing the length of them. I draw the bow back and forth across that to get the notes. So, um, I mean, can anybody throw some light on this? Why, why aren't I playing the Four Seasons like Nigel Kennedy? <laughs> Thanks very much. <laughs> I think you got that perhaps to run the wrong way around. <laughs> Practice, yeah, that was an excellent one there. Any, any other experience as well? Fantastic. Talent. Well, <laughs> it's a little bit close to the bone, and I can tell you, you can actually go off an audience pretty quickly when you're up there. But, uh, we'll move on to that shortly. Well, uh, you know, absolutely. The kind of things that I could do is I could learn from an expert. I could find somebody who's really great at playing violin and they could show me how to do it. Even better, I could, uh, I could collaborate with peers. I could find people in the wider community also learning violin and we could encourage each other and learn from one another. What about if I started with something a bit less challenging? So rather than aiming to play um, the Four Seasons in its entirety, what about if I wanted to play Twinkle Twinkle Little Star? I'd probably have a better chance of achieving that, wouldn't I? Oh, um. And of course, as somebody so rightly said, practice. You know, you can't expect to be fantastic at something if you don't put the effort in, put the time in. Get a bit of practice. And we often do this with uh, uh, rapidly learning author tools in particular. In particular, we think it's enough just to buy a license to it and at best get a, a little bit of uh, training on how to use it. And then we, we get a bit disheartened when we're not creating the e-learning equivalent of the four seasons. Now, all those things I've talked about that's only that's playing other people's music. That's not composition, that's not creating your own. And that is where instructional design comes in. And that, if I can get on the right slide, uh, is why it's so important. I mean, even, even in very talented musicians, just because you can play an instrument, it doesn't mean that you're necessarily good at composing your own music. So where do we learn about good instructional design? Well, we look at content that works well, uh, that other people have produced. We see what we can learn from it. Uh, we, look f we study instructional design, so we uh, read some decent books on it by some of, the, some of the better authors. We come to events like this and we try and gather best practices. We get involved in the, the communities uh, that we can be a part of. Now, here's a question for you. If my aim was not to play the violin, if my aim was just to play Twinkle Twinkle Little Star and play it really well, how might I make my task easier for myself? So again, just shout out any ideas. Different instrument, absolutely. It's about tools, isn't it? So 
if I was to instead have a go at playing Twinkle Twinkle Little Star on a piano, I'd probably nail it a damn sight quicker than I would do on the violin. Now, when we talk about tools for particularly rapid e-learning, we often think about Articulate and Adobe Presenter. Both excellent tools, I've got a lot of time for them, but they're not the be-all and end-all. There's an awful lot more available out there. And I think the kind of things we should be looking at, and the kind of tools we should be using, video. So many of you have got one of these fantastic little flip video cameras that you can start shooting and editing uh, video in a matter of hours, um, quickly capture uh, knowledge and pass that on. Audio, so easy to record audio, you can probably do it on your phone, you could buy yourself a decent mic and record direct into your PC. You can use that for podcasts, you can add audio to presentations, uh, add audio to courses, and again there's all kinds of different ways you can use that. And also, I'm really into um, screencasting technology at the moment, so Screener is one example, Jing is another, where you can very, very quickly, in a matter of minutes, capture what you're doing on screen and record your voice in time with that and publish that on the web. And that is an incredibly fast way of, of authoring content and really good quality content as well, content you can be proud of. So another tool which sits kind of within the rapid author um, area, and I know it's been mentioned a couple of times at the... Um, at the conference, but it's certainly one that I really rate. It's Thinking Worlds from Caspian, where you're um, building, uh, you're working in a 3D environment. So you've got a character, you can put it in an environment that can interact uh, with other characters and other objects. And for me, it, that's a quantum leap forward in terms of what we can do with instructional design. Um, and I, I really do enjoy, it really is a mentally stretching to develop stuff in there, because the, the possibilities are so much, broad, so much more broad. Now, this isn't a one-size-fits-all solution. There are, this is only right for a particular, particular projects, particular target audiences, and particular cultures within organizations. So certainly with something like um, Thinking Worlds, because it is such a strong-flavored approach, if you're thinking about using that, run a pilot group with some typical end users and see if it's the right kind of cultural fit. Now, I don't want you to be kind of disheartened by all this, because... I don't think there's a huge amount that you need to learn to be able to produce really good instructionally sound content that uh, achieves its learning outcomes efficiently um, and, and effectively. However, I don't think it's a few hours worth of study. I think it's a few days. I think maybe five to ten days. If you really buckle down and you study this stuff, I think at the end of that you'd be producing some pretty reasonable content. So the main things that I, I'd like to draw out of this is you know, choose the right tool for the job. As we heard yesterday from uh, Barry Sampson and uh, David Wilson, you know, there's so many, so many new uh, ways of authoring content available now. And they're so easy to use, and they're also really cheap. So the great thing about that is you can kind of pick up a tool, try it out for free, see if it fits your needs. If it doesn't, discard it, try something else. And great directories like Jane Hart's um, tools listing of uh, author tools and, and so forth is a great place where you can find these out. I'd also argue that it's one of the most important skills for an e-learning developer and a rapid e-learning developer in particular is not knowing a particular tool really well, but being able to pick up and use pretty much any tool to a reasonable level in a short space of time. So study instructional design and come to events like this, get some good books on it, you know, join the uh, shameless plug here, join the e-learning network, we have a designers group there, we run free webinars on design and and so forth, become part of the community and give as well as receive. Um, so work with your peers and share knowledge within the, tension is mounting now, uh, and share knowledge within the community. Be realistic in your aims. So um, certainly it's okay to, to shoot for the stars, but I think if you start with something you can do a really good job of in a short space of time, it's going to build your confidence and you're going to be able to prove uh, to the people around you that uh, what you're doing is certainly worthwhile. And of course, practice, practice, practice. So I'd just like to finish now by saying I hope every time you hear that wonderful piece of music, you'll think of my rendition of it, and perhaps you'll even remember a little bit about what I said today. So thanks very much. Oh, thank you.